Why has Archwell failed, whereas the Royal Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge has utterly succeeded, I think, raising 20 million pounds just this year. Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and like I said, I'm just gonna be kind of analyzing how really we have these two competing royal foundations or charities. One is obviously based in the UK and is functioned around Catherine and William and their interests and the other one is Archwell, which is Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's their kind of answer to the royal foundation after they were denied the name Sussex Royal. And I just find it really fascinating that, that despite Harry and Meghan's superstardom, really, every time they do something, they get a huge press reaction. However, it is failing to turn into cold, hard cash. Sure, they make a big splash when they go somewhere, all the paparazzi are there, but nobody's donating money. Why is that? I find that a really interesting question and one I'm just gonna analyze a bit today. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network before, like I said, my name is Brittany. We talk about everything related to royals here. So that's news, gossip, fashion, jewelry, television shows, movies, and history. We'll do it all right here. So if you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. And I did have a giveaway that I completed and I actually, it's on the community post. My winner has not reached out yet. So if you guys want to go ahead and check that out and see who the winner is and you know, please email me. I'd love to send out the swatch to you. We will have a live stream tomorrow as well. I'm so excited. We'll be discussing Tom Bauer's book about Harry and Meghan. So if you guys want to tune in for that, it'll be at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I was trying to figure out what time would be best, but it was a little bit of a challenge because trying to factor in Asia is just really, really hard. So guys, I just went ahead and went with that. I hope as many of you can join as possible. And then if you miss it, you are able to catch up at a later time. And I also have a larger question to my audience as well. So normally this is Fashion Friday, but what I've found is that even though I love Fashion Friday and I wanna continue doing it, there's always kind of interesting news that pops up. And being that this is a news channel, kind of catching while everybody's talking about a particular topic, it's kind of a huge thing. Yes, you can wait, but it's also great to kind of hit the news cycle in kind of a quick manner. So I have been debating and I do actually have a page already assigned for this that I was going to expand to at some point, but I'm wondering, I would like to do maybe just a royal fashion YouTube page that's just dedicated to that. That one would be on a very specific schedule. Yes, we would interrupt for things like, you know, the Swedish Nobles prize ceremony where everybody gets dressed in their greatest gowns and tiaras and obviously their state visits and various things. But this would really be a more consistent, you know, discussing fashion, to dis discussing jewelry and tiaras and all those sorts of things. That page would be dedicated to that. So if you are interested, I did put the link to the YouTube page at the bottom. And if you want, if you're interested in that, or if you think that would be like a good idea, please let me know. Cause this site, like I said, this interesting news came up about Harry and Meghan versus Catherine and William and their foundations. And I just really wanted to cover it, even though I do have something for Fashion Friday already filmed, but I thought this maybe took a bit more of a precedent. So if you're interested in just having a dedicated royal fashion page, please let me know in the comments down below. And I would just love to hear from you about that. But let's go back to kind of this competition between Catherine and William and Meghan and Harry. Guys, you know, irregardless of what you think about the couples, they were already always gonna be competitive with each other because that's kind of naturally siblings that kind of naturally happens in kind of a lot of royal communities. Although I don't think quite as much anymore because it's very much set whoever is the heir, that is it. Everybody else kind of, you know, can do something from time to time, but they're not, you know, kind of the most pressing or the most authoritative or get the most press attention or even do that many royal engagements. That's kind of how all the royal families are moving towards. So I think it actually makes a lot of sense for Meghan and Harry to never really have a dedicated royal foundation type thing to themselves. However, I think that Harry and Meghan have always been incredibly jealous of Catherine and William and want to compete with them, even though there's just even no way they can compete because Catherine and William will be the future king and queen and Harry and Meghan will just get further and further down the line of succession. This is how all royal families work, guys. This is not a, should not be a surprise to anyone because Princess Anne started as 
second in line to the throne. And I don't even know where she's at right now. She's in the te late teens, if not maybe even reaching 20 in the line of succession. And that's, again, just how this goes. So I think Harry and Meghan really, really wanted to compete with Catherine and William. And we saw this in the split in the foundations when they were still all royals and working together. So they did have, when Meghan was first, you know, engaged and about to marry in, they did have this Fab Four sit down thing where they discuss the future of the Royal Foundation. And we got that one time and never, ever again. Because they are very, very different personalities, A. And Meghan always seems to want to be the star, B. And so Catherine and William, even though it was a joint foundation between the four of them at the time and between, you know, obviously Harry at the time, really Catherine and William. The split was always probably going to happen because Catherine and William will always take precedence. That is just how this whole royal thing is set up. That is always how it goes. So I do feel sorry for Harry and Meghan in a way, in a way, because I don't think, especially Meghan totally understood that and Harry was terrible at explaining it to her. And so when they were denied like their own court and their own correspondence, all these sorts of things, and they were going to be housed under Buckingham Palace, that came as a great shock to them because Harry and Meghan believed that Meghan was the next coming of Diana, even though she had only spent like six months inside the royal family, hadn't really done that much. She was, did not, you know, start when she was married when she was 19. She was like 36. And so it was just, there's just no comparison between Meghan and Diana. There just really, really isn't. And so you kind of have this fractious relationship between the two foundations. And when they split, this was obviously, there was some money that was funneled to Sussex Royal because Harry and Meghan, when they first broke off, they did have Sussex Royal that they could kind of be in charge of. And they have recently kind of dissolved that. Although it was also labeled like Markle Windsor, like, you know, foundation, like, but it went MW, which again shows the like Megan trampling on Harry as you know the royal because really it should have always been William Markle or sorry Windsor Markle not to mention the fact that you know usually in marriage it's you know the husband's last name first and then the wife's if they do hyphenate you know the husband's last name takes precedence but you know what whatever but anyways so they had these two foundations and when harry and megan announced that they were going to be basically closing up shop and heading to the united states through mexit it was kind of basically decided well we're going to close their foundation and they have and supposedly the money transferred either to travelist or to archwell it's not clear but when they moved to california obviously they eventually announced hey we're going to start archwell and a i will just say i think archwell is a horrible horrible name. It's an awful name. It really is a terrible name. It's like Argewell. It's, it's just too wordy. It's not, not simple. And it's just, I mean, it is, but it isn't, if that makes sense. It's just not something that rolls off the tongue easily. I've always been of the opinion that Meghan Markle is a ter is absolutely terrible at branding. And so like they came up with this name and it was like supposedly part of their son's name. It's just all sorts of weirdness, but they kind of made a big splash about launching this and you know, obviously it was during the pandemic and Throughout that, you know, whole 2020 year, how much money did they make? How much money were they able to raise? Less than $50,000 Yes, despite their global presence less than $50,000 was donated. And how do I know this? Because I got their 990. So every charity in the United States must file a 990. Although Megan and Harry have set up Archwell in Delaware where they can hide a lot of their finances. Uh, when it comes to charities, you do have to file a 990. You can't get out of filing this paperwork. So you're actually able to go to the IRS and you are actually able to find it. So hold on just one second. Where did it go? Here it is, Archwell Inc. This is directly from the IRS and they had to file what is called a 990 postcard. They couldn't even file a full 990 because as it says, gross receipts not greater than $50,000. That's what it says right there. Their at mailing address is on Wilshire Boulevard, which if you don't know in Hollywood, that's a pretty famous street because again, Megan is all about clout chasing. She's all about, you know, thinking, you know, trying to put in luxury to her brand and like establishing it with like the Hollywood elite. So Wilshire does kind of make sense, you know, for Megan and everything. But what's interesting as well is that, you know, for that whole 2020, yes, they established their charity, I think in April or something like that. Nobody, nobody gave them money. 
which is just if you think about it incredibly fascinating and obviously you know it is Delaware so they can kind of transfer funds a bit more and in the United States my understanding is <laughs> up to 95% of a charity can be you know Basically, only you have to give 5% of your organization's money to charity. Kind of the rest can be kind of operational expenses and those sorts of things. But I really find it really fascinating that, again, Archwell can't seem to get a financial foothold. Obviously, I did check for the check again. I checked 990 and I checked this is the only year and this is 2020. So obviously, they probably filed an extension on their taxes. So we don't know how much they have made this year, you know, perhaps they could have made $20 million as well. Who knows? But I kind of highly doubt that. And there's a couple of reasons why I think that is. Number one, Harry and Meghan don't have trust. And what I mean by that is I don't think the public trusts them very well. So we saw this in the Tom Bauer book. When it came to setting up a charity slash foundation for Harry and Meghan, there were two choices. They could do a foundation or a charity. And this was the palace's decision. A foundation, you actually are able to keep a decent amount of things kind of private. And that is what Catherine and William have. When it came to setting up for Harry and Meghan, the palace decided to go with a charity, which meant that there was a, a board that oversaw the charity that wasn't really in, under Harry and Meghan's control, and that Harry and Meghan really could not get any access to that money. And I think that's a huge issue and why a lot of people are concerned or don't even want to touch Archwell is because they don't know how their money is gonna be spent. Because you have to establish trust. I mean, even if you look through various websites, obviously there's just not a lot of data to go by, but you know, there's a website called Charity Navigator and a couple others like that. And there's no information about Archwell on there. There's no information. Nobody knows what this, nobody knows how their money is being spent, what's being done. And that's how Harry and Meghan set it up. They set it up to conceal their operations. And that's just, A, just kind of slimy. It just is. And B, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get people to donate to you if they don't know where their money is going, if they don't see tangible results. And that's problem number two. There aren't really any tangible results that Harry and Meghan can speak to in a lot of ways. When it comes to Catherine and William, obviously the Earthshot price has been huge. And we have Hold Still, we have, you know, the Early Years Foundation and just a bunch of other things that Catherine and William are doing that's having a real impact and really is kind of, in terms of the Earthshot Prize, I feel like kind of almost leading the industry in a way. And I, what I appreciate about the Earthshot Prize is that it's not guilting people into, for example, having a, an SUV like Harry and Meghan do. They guilt people for travel, for SUVs and all these sorts of things, and yet they ignore their own advice and, you know, go around and gas guzzlers all the time. You know, there's there's a disconnect there and people just don't generally like that. But also Catherine and William, again, they're having a real impact. The Earthshot Prize will be in the United States this year. People are very, very, very excited about that. Not to mention the fact that, you know, they have, you know, the, the Kennedy family excited about it because obviously it's named after John F. Kennedy or sorry, the Earthshot Prize, the name is inspired by the Moonshot Prize with John F. Kennedy set up to get, get a U.S. flight crew to the moon. So that was where the inspiration came from that. They're coming to Boston this year. And so I think, and the Earthshot Prize is doing so well, they've actually established it as its own entity now. So it is connected still with obviously Prince William and Catherine, but it's its own entity. And their close associate, basically Jason Knapp, is heading that. So they've been, you know, in many, many ways, unbelievably successful in this endeavor. It has gone hugely, hugely well. And I think Catherine with her early years projects is really showing a passion in that area. Obviously Hold Still was fantastic as well. This was the basically COVID campaign where she encouraged people to send in their pictures, capturing you know COVID and those sorts of things and kind of the impact on communities. And there was a large and promising reaction to that. So I think, that has really established people have a huge amount of trust in Catherine and William. And they've seen the results of their work. We haven't really seen any results of Meghan and Harry. We, they gave at the most, I think I calculated 25 to 50, 
$25 Starbucks gift cards to a charity working on parental leave. That's nothing. I'm sorry, but that's that's really not a lot of money. Like at the most, she spent a couple of hundred, a couple of, you know, maybe low thousand dollars or something like that. She did not spend that much money to do that. Yet they had to make a big splash about it. They replaced one roof in Texas, if I remember correctly. A single roof, which I've replaced a roof on my house and it was like seven, eight thousand dollars. And they did give us a little bit of discount because we had a um, kind of a, a messiness with the person who sold us our house and he did not replace the roof properly and all these sorts of things. Replacing a roof, yes, it can be costly, but depending on how big the roof is, it, it might not actually be that much. And so it was like, yay, I guess. And even though there was great, a great deal of devastation, they, they replaced one roof, guys. They replaced one roof. I mean, that is a great thing to do. It was a women's shelter. Not saying it's not good, but the results are so minuscule that does anybody care? I just don't really think anybody cares. And then obviously you had the publicity stunt of Uvalde, Texas. And so Megan literally flew on a private plane costing twenty to $30,000 for her direct flight there and back and brought them basically Costco food. So what I mean by that is she literally, like somebody literally went to Costco and bought bulk of like Chips Ahoy, like I can't remember oh, what they're called now, but they're like, they're like chocolate chip cookies. Like, you know, like the cheap ones that you can get from a vending machine. And she, that was at least the food in front of her. So I'm like, okay, so you spent $30,000 and you spent maybe at the most a couple thousand dollars on food. Like, so what was the point of you going there? You, and you brought all this attention to yourself, which was in the midst of tragedy. There are ch dead children and you're there basically to promote yourself. So I really feel like after a while, Harry and Meghan, when they do something, it's the bare minimum. And that's their other kind of problem. Not only do they not have results, it's like when they do something, they do just the tiniest thing and expect a huge reward from it. We kind of also had this in terms of the kind of Mothers Against Gun Violence organization. I can't remember the exact name off the top of my head. But again, Meghan sent them coffee and like bagels. And they had to, tell the world how great this was. And, and, you know, kind of going with, you know, their, their efforts are always minimal. They always have to have massive praise for their minimal efforts. So they gave a couple of hundred dollars maybe for like Einstein's bagels and coffee or something and have that catered. I mean, that's nice. I mean, maybe they even still went with Costco bagels. I would not be surprised, but they, they went for just something so small and they seem to need praise for just doing something so like inconsequential really. I mean, it's nice, not saying it's not nice, but tell me what Harry and Meghan have done to change the world. Tell me, tell me how they're impacting local communities. Like really, not Meghan reading her gosh darn book to children. You know, they donated what one washer or they promised it. Don't know if they ever succeeded. They donated $25,000 to, $25, to one restaurant in New York, which is on the higher end of their donations. So. Like, I just don't understand why anybody would donate to them. And I think that's their biggest problem. Combining all things, these things together, why would anybody donate to Archwell? You don't have transparency, so you don't know where your money is going. They seem to spend money on frivolous things like a private jet for a publicity stunt for, you know, while the whole country is mourning, you know, what if was it 19 dead children you had to fly out there so attention could be on yourself that was totally unnecessary she had no connection to that community again i get matthew mcconaughey he has connection to that community there was a, a baseball guy and i believe he also has a con connection to texas megan markle flies over texas and doesn't care about it unless somebody's paying her to be there and they just do kind of the bare minimum so how it's just no surprise that Catherine and William are able to get 20 million pounds in donation, 20 million point four million pounds, because people trust them. And here's the other thing is that we know that any money donated to Catherine and William's charity is going to the charity or is going to admin services for people who are working within the charity. It's not going to Catherine and William. And that's, I think, Harry and Meghan's Achilles heel. We don't know where the money is going. We don't know where the money is going. Catherine and William, we know they're not touching that money unless it goes to a charity. They designated to go to X charity. 
Other than that, it's staying in the pot, it's staying to support the services that they're doing. It's, it's doing those things, helping with their staff members and anything like that. It's not going to fund Meghan Markle's Hermes blanket. And if you think about it as well, probably the biggest charity endeavor that Harry and Meghan have is the Invictus Games. And what does Meghan do at the Invictus Games? She goes and purchases a new $65,000 wardrobe. I calculated the cost of most of the items. I came up with about $65,000, could be more or less, because I couldn't tell exactly which Justin Clo Cartier necklace she had on. It could have ranged from fifteen dollars to 20000 to upwards of $40,000 for that necklace. And so you're telling me you're spending $65,000 in new clothing. Oftentimes, too, like, her casual outfit with jeans was still thousands of dollars. She wore a, a sunglasses that retail for $1,000 at a charity event. And you're telling me that, you know, we're, that you want me to donate to you? No, if I was going to donate to the Invictus Games, I wouldn't donate to the Invictus Games. I wouldn't give Harry and Meghan my money because it's hard to donate to somebody when they're flashing tons of cash and acting like they have new money. And it seems like that new money is spent on Megan's wardrobe rather than going to the charity itself. Because if you compare it to Catherine at the Earthshot Prize last year, she rewore a dress. I think the belt was new, but she rewore a dress she wore over 10 years ago. And I think, again, that shows incredible class and that it wasn't all about her. Whereas Megan always has to make everything all about her her and I think that severely damages her and Harry's charitable endeavors because people don't trust them they don't know where their money is going and they don't want to see a woman who is so charitable wearing an outfit that costs more than some people make in an entire month or two months or three months or four months especially during a time of recession because I think again Harry and Meghan I don't think they'll raise that much more money because where is their money going? Probably to Sunshine Sacks. Because even though they are getting some sort of award, I feel like every award they get, they've paid for it in some way. And we know that they donated something to this Afghanistan thing, but we don't know how much. It could be large, it could be small, but people just bring them in sometimes because they like the publicity, even though Megan and Harry aren't actually going to accept the award. So it wasn't something I don't think probably that financially benefited them, I would guess. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think of this video. I was just super inspired, kind of like looking at that going, wow, I can't believe Harry and Meghan can't even break $50,000 and Catherine and William made $20 million. In the previous year, they made $11 million when Meghan and Harry could only make less than 50,000. So guys, I found that super interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you're interested in kind of a standalone fashion channel, it would again be something that's more consistent and more obviously not kind of reacting to news items. So you could expect a video on certain days all the time. So guys, let me know if that's something that's of interest to you because I'm really, really thinking about going in that direction. And thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.